All right, I still got some play in the rear end, some vibrations going on, and from what I can tell with the garage shifts, which I'll show you here in a minute, uh, there's quite a bit of flex in the drivetrain somewhere, um, in the rear suspension it seems. And from being underneath it the other day, I noticed that the bushing on the back side of the differential is pretty wore out. I, the, I put the jack up underneath it and I could flex it a good inch or so, so I'm pretty sure that's wore out. So that's what we're gonna be replacing today. I'll show you here with some garage shifts that you can see the back end moving around quite a bit. And by garage shifts, I mean reverse to drive to reverse shifts. And there's a audible clunk with that as well. So say you're backing out of your driveway and then going into a drive, there's a pretty good clunk when that happens. You can somewhat hear it when this happens. I'll try and stay quiet for a second. All right, so we'll be replacing that bushing today. Um, from what I've read in the forums, the easiest way to do this, if you're doing just the bushing, is to uh, remove the back side of the differential, so the differential cover. So I'll be doing that, which sucks because I just drained and refilled the differential fluid with new fluid. So I guess we'll be doing that again, so. But I don't really feel like dro dropping the whole rear suspension at this point. Uh, that's a project for later. I've got new subframe bushings and control arm uh, bushings as well. I'll be doing that in total at some point. Um, but that's a project for a later date. So today, just the differential bushing, I'm gonna take the cover off. I'm gonna try to press it out. If I can't press it out, the alternate method is to cut it out with a sawzall. You just have to be careful that you don't nick the housing because that could uh, cause some uh, hairline fractures to occur and eventually maybe just break off that whole uh, loop that holds the bushing into the differential cover. Without further ado, let's uh, get to wrenching. All right, looking up underneath here, trying to get the lighting right. There's the bushing right now, and it looks like it's pretty well uh, flopped out to the top. Pretty sure that's the technical term. So what we're going to do here, start by draining the rear diff fluid. That is a 14 millimeter Allen wrench. And then uh, we've got these bolts around the perimeter. It looks like it's a 5 8 is what's fitting on there the most snug, so I'm not going to make you watch all that. While this is draining, I'm going to put some penetrating fluid on those bolt heads and then uh, we'll go from there. In an effort to get a little more clearance around the back side of the differential, I'm removing the spare tie carrier. If you're not aware on how to remove that, look into your subfloor of the trunk you find this plastic knob, unscrew that, and then to the right of the battery there's another bolt down there that you'll have to loosen and that can all be done with the tools in the kit. And then what that does, there's a spare tire right there, it sits in this wireframe tray and what I did on this side with the handle that's got the cable coming through, that right there is just threaded into the end of this here so I used some uh, pliers just to unbolt that and that just leaves me the front side two bolts to remove and then this whole wireframe should come out and then you can see I got quite a bit better access to the back side of the differential and uh, I did break all the bolts loose in a good way uh, you can use 5 8 or 16 millimeter both worked uh, and then we'll go from there. And look at all that room in there now without that uh, spare wheel in there. Uh, so I've removed this sensor. These are all loose. I'm about to take those all out. Fluid is drained to an extent. There's still going to be some that comes out when I pop the cover off. So now I'm trying to get to the, the bushing bolt. Looks like it's got a lock nut on the front side and it is a 19 millimeter.
Good thing is that bolt is not seized in the bushing, so that's going to come out nicely, but I do need to push it forward a little bit so we can get my ratchet off. And then, uh, one last thing I'm looking at here on the top. This bolt right here is a bit tough to get at uh, with both box wrench and socket. So what I'm hoping is I'm just going to support the bottom side of the uh, differential here with my jack. I take this rear support bolt out and hopefully I can uh, tip that down enough to get to that bolt. All right, well, they will take that bolt out for the bushing right here. Simply by putting some upward pressure on the differential, loosen it all up, it slid right out. And uh, now I've lowered it. And that allowed me to get to that top bolt with a universal joint or flex joint and get that top bolt out. It looks like that one's gonna be loose enough I can get that one out by fingers. And yeah, so we'll take the rest of these out. The uh, bottom of the back cover already started separating. So I tightened one of those bolts just up a little bit. So we don't get too much fluid everywhere. And then I'll just set these on the new gasket so I know which bolt goes where. It's looking like they're probably all going to be the same except for these two on the, the uh, driver's side. Uh, are a little bit longer because they go through a fin and then part of the support bracket for the bushing <clears throat> so it should be pretty obvious Now one thing to look at while you're under here, I believe the one failure point of these vehicles is right here. Uh, the two pieces of, uh, it looks like it might, might be one piece of metal folded and welded to the frame to hold that bushing in place. From my understanding is the higher power cars, if modified, this starts to fail, but it doesn't look like any of the welds are pulling or there's no uh, stress fractures or fatigue on the bracket itself so this all looks good right now here's the inside of the cover a little bit of build up gasket all looks good but I would say this bushing is definitely done and cooked here's the replacement side by side it does look like it's biased to the top by design, but you can see the way it's pulling away from its housing. It's quite wore out. So we'll get this new one pressed in and uh, install. Now I've got my new gasket right there. All right, first attempt in the press and the uh, centerpiece completely disbonded from the, uh, the ring in there. So, 70% further. Alright, so now I've got the new one stacked on the outside of the old one. We'll see if I can just press it through. Appears to be working.
So it might be going on a little bit crooked. I'm going to reset the position of that. Well, that's what you don't want happening. Crack the housing. Perfect. All right, so we're gonna do a little temporary fix on this fracture. Got some JB Weld. 3000 PSI strength, and it says it's good for aluminum. So I wire brushed the surfaces and cleared out anything out of the crack and it's still bent a little bit but I'm hoping I can uh, put some straps or something around that to bring it together for cure time it says it sets in six minutes and cures in four to six hours this is going to be a temporary fix I did look online these covers go for about four hundred dollars so I'm going to see if I can't find one used or salvaged first so hopefully this will be enough to let me buy. Luckily this is supporting in this direction, so I'm hoping there's enough here and here to support the weight of whatever's going on. And I guess we'll probably hear something if that cracks back open. So that's what I'm doing for now. All right, so here's what I ended up with. I was able to close the gap with this C-clamp and then I've got the JB Weld crack is right here. I've got it spanning this uh, extrusion. And hopefully there's enough bonding on both the sides and this surface over here and then I built it up just right above where the crack is. So we'll see how that does. Well I tell you what, this is the, the gift that keeps on giving. This right here, this is the vehicle speed sensor which I imagine probably gives signal to the speedometer and potentially the transmission or stability control or anything like that well what we have here is a broken sensor now I'm wondering if that that may have broke when I initially took the cover off if it went sideways a little bit, which I think it did, it may have caught the uh, the gear set in there and then just broke that off. It's either that or I had it laying on the that side of it when I was trying to get the uh, bearing pressed in. Regardless, this is a special order item through the local parts dealers. Couldn't get a hold of the BMW parts department, but I did find this on Turner Motorsports, Genuine One BMW one is about fifty dollars. Other options might be salvage yard. So anyway, I got one coming from Turner Motorsports. Should be here in a couple days, and then uh, hopefully this aspect of it's good. And then I found a couple of these covers on eBay for about one hundred and eighty dollars. It's a discontinued item. Um, I did also find some aftermarket ones with some additional fins down here that may have been used on the Z3M. Those are about four to five hundred dollars, give or take. So we'll see how this JB Weld holds. And another option may be to take it to a local welder that does aluminum. So we'll go from there. All right, here's the JB Weld special. The little tooth on the sensor, I JB welded back together, and then the side 
of the bushing carrier is also JB welded. It's all sitting under its own weight right now. Uh, there was no cracking or anything like that. It seems to be holding at the moment. So we're gonna refill the the fluid. I found a used one on eBay that's gonna be here at the end of the week. And then I've got one of these sensors coming from Turner Motorsports. So by no means is this a uh, permanent solution. It's just to buy me the week. And then I saved the um, gasket, the new gasket for when I get the new cover put on. So we're gonna be filling it like I did last time with some 75 weight 140. I did get a different pump this time, one of these transfer pumps, because with the little uh, I don't know, squeeze bottle top uh, pump, I was pumping for days just to fill this little thing, and it takes 1.7 quarts. So it's almost these, both these bottles. So I'm not going to show you all that because I did that in my last video. But uh, we're starting to button it all up. Now I was also going to mention that the torques for these bolts, the ones around the perimeter of the housing or the cover, I didn't see those specifically uh, identified in the table. But in the front of the Bentley manual there is a table for just general torques. These are M10s with an 8.8 .8, uh, tensile strength and it recommended 47 newton meters on these. And then the one carrier bolt, bushing carrier bolt to the body is 77 newton meters. Less than 842 on DIY. I was filling and that little tube popped off the end of my pump and just fell off into the uh, differential. So that was pretty awesome. I pulled the drain plug and luckily I got the tube to come out by about half the fluid coming out so I was able to recover most of it but in the future I guess just make sure that uh, your tubes are secure and then also since I'm leaving the spare tire carrier off I went ahead and sealed the two mounting holes that go up into the trunk area just to keep uh, debris from going up inside there and what I used for that was just some uh, flex seal uh, tape Alright, we're still up on the ramps, but should be able to test and see if there's any difference in the, the movement in the rear end here and see if that uh, JB weld holds. Alright, is it going to reverse? And drive. And reverse. Drive. Alright, I mean, it seems to be about half as much as it was before so I'm pretty happy with that and two or three shifts and the uh, we'll go check and see if the epoxy is still good